Hello, it's Mr O'Mara here again. I want to talk to you about task two in the deep reading work. This is where you collect examples of direct speech. So I'm reading my novel Bureau of Mysteries again and on page 22 I hear some direct speech. Now direct speech is when the author tells you what somebody actually said. So they give you their exact words. It's called direct because you've got a direct line on it. They don't just give you the general information, you know the exact words they said. So, on my page, um, George Feather says, Imp, are you okay? I asked. So, I know who's speaking. It's George Feather, which I'll just type in here. Now, I actually happen to have grabbed what he said a minute ago because I want to look at it in detail. So, I'm going to copy that across. Now, that's too big, but that's easily fixed. And it's on page, I know I said this earlier, it's on page 22. So all I need to do is actually go through and find three examples of that and copy it out exactly as it is. But since I've got you thinking about direct speech, there's a couple of things I want to point out. And it's about why we copy it out exactly, including all of the correct punctuation. Because the punctuation tells us quite a lot about direct speech. So the first thing is that those things which we call inverted commas or talking marks or quotation marks go around all the words that are said. So I know exactly what the character said because it's wrapped in those quotation marks or talking marks. And all of these names are fine. So first thing is I definitely have the talking marks. They don't have they can be singles or doubles, but whatever you use, use it consistently. The second thing that I'm looking for is that often we have a speech verb saying who spoke and the way that they spoke. So I asked, he said, she inquired, that kind of thing. You don't have to have it. And you will find examples of speech where they just put the speech there in inverted commas without the speech verb. You can do that. That's okay. But the speech verb helps orient our reader and let them know who's speaking and a bit of information about how they're speaking. The last thing that I want to point out to you while I've got you here is that the stuff that's in between the inverted commas is actually punctuated like a sentence. So it starts with a capital letter. Now, imp starts with a capital letter both because it's somebody's name and also because it's the start of the sentence and it has punctuation on the end. There are more complexities to how speech is punctuated and actually I'll give you um, an example of it. So if, if um, imp replied, and I'm making this up, imp replied, replied, I'm fine, as you can see, I'm fine is punctuated like a sentence. It starts with a capital, it ends with a full stop. And that's all good. But another thing that you'll notice is that that comma comes up when you start with a speech verb and then you go into the speech. It's actually imp replied, comma, I'm fine. So that's not everything you need to know, but that's a useful thing to know, is that when you're going from speech verb to the bit in inverted commas, you've got a little comma there just to let the reader know that that's what you're moving into. So go find your examples of direct speech and copy them out exactly. And be really careful about the punctuation because there are some complexities to it and it's there for a reason. So copy it out exactly as you see it.